Hate is a very destructive thing. That hate is going to go outward and it's going to hurt a considerable amount of people or that hate is going to go inward and it's going to destroy you from the inside out. I did a lot of terrible things and God gave me another chance. I'm in love with this woman. I'm happy to be married to this woman and I want everybody to know that. The one here in the middle, Catherine is wearing my uh, brass knuckles uh, championship belt. She worked for, as my manager that night and the belt over my shoulder is for the United States taped fist uh, wrestling uh, championship. The name's Keith Snyder. People have been calling me Duke since I was a year old. I'm a Brooklyn resident and uh, I'm a man who's been through the meat grinder of life. My name is Catherine Boone. I live in Marine Park, Brooklyn. I was working for a security corporation and she asked me to be her personal bodyguard. He decided to take my case after everything um, I've been through. She was married to a man that was beating her on a daily basis practically. Although she couldn't afford my usual salary, when I heard her life story, I just couldn't let her go unprotected and I took that mission completely free of charge. Okay, this is Duke's cup. I uh, let her have a room in one of the bedrooms in my house. He like his coffee black. I gotta get some sugar and half and half to pass the mic. I was in love with him when I first met him. He's kind, kind-hearted, gentle, and he was a real man. He opened car doors for me. He had pull off the seat for me so I could sit down in the restaurant. I had feelings at the onset. Here she is walking around with the feelings she has, and here I am walking around with the feelings I have, that I was uh, very seriously restraining and uh, suppressing. In 2005, she was riding a bus, and on that bus, there were several skinheads that started uh, bantering and harassing her. They were telling me, you're in the wrong neighborhood. I was afraid, you know, that they might do something. I figured the next best move to make would be to join some neo-Nazi group that could put a spotlight on skinhead activity in New York City. I found the National Socialist Movement I became a member of that group very quickly. My interest in Nazism dates back to age five. As a child living in an extremely dysfunctional family, I was exposed to a lot of physical violence. As a frightened child, as a beaten child, as a physically weak child, I saw my first documentary on Adolf Hitler. And I immediately became fascinated with the strength that they projected. And this just became an obsession after a period of time. This is all that's left of what once was. I received my very first uniform. When I put it on and looked in the mirror, everything just seemed to go right back in regression to my childhood fascinations. I'm where I've always wanted to be. I'm what I've always wanted to be. I didn't like it at the time, but I kept it inside. I said, um, he's going to get out of there sooner or later. There's not a racist bone in his body. The National Socialist Movement has a very active and very disciplined SS division. I was the chief of SS forces, and I was in full command of these commandos. When I first met Duke, he gave no indication that he was part of the neo-Nazi movement at all. All I knew is before me was a very frightened uh, man who was desperate for help. Later on, as we spoke about how he got involved, I believe one of the main reasons was it gave him purpose. It gave him meaning. He did have this sense that he was helping our country and it made him feel good. What did I fear most? That he would get killed for somebody else. I thought that I was definitely a part of this now for life. I wasn't even a human being anymore. And I felt like a man riding on the back of a tiger. You don't dismount that tiger. It took a jolt like cancer to actually give me a shake and wake me up. When I got my diagnosis, Catherine had uh, taken a trip with me. 
And after they told me what they told me, the first thing I said to her was, I'm going to die, Catherine. I was praying every day. And I said, the Lord is going to heal him. I took him to my church and let him talk to the pastor. And he says, well, I want to pray for you, but I can't as long as you're involved in what you're involved in. I asked him, would he be willing to renounce his affiliation with the National Socialist Movement? And he said, yes, he would do that. Whatever life I have left, I want it to be as a free man. I don't want to be known as a Nazi anymore. It's taken my life over. And it's gotten me just about nothing but a world full of enemies. Before I went in for surgery, Catherine had told me, she says, listen, I've been in love with you ever since you decided to be my bodyguard. Catherine stayed there all through the night with me. And I took her hand and I said, you know, just as soon as I get my strength back, I'm gonna marry you. And we got married on October uh, 27th. It was beautiful. From when he took me to Kings Plaza to get the rain, so I didn't believe him. And then we bought the dress at Kings Plaza, the blue dress, he picked out the color. Then we went to church. And then I said, I do twice. <laughs> I said it twice. It's the first time in my life that I've actually come to know real, actual uh, love. And I have no difficulties whatsoever uh, returning that love. Every day is like a honeymoon. We sit in front of the TV set, watch old movies. Everywhere we go, we hold hands. We even stop a kiss. He would wake me up at 3 o'clock in the morning and tell me he loved me. I said, I love you too, Duke. Now go back and sleep. You really have to love somebody an awful lot if you're going to stick by them and they're involved in all that kind of a mess because most other people would just simply uh, pack their bags and walk. I stuck by him through thick and thin, no matter what he was involved in, I didn't leave. Right by his side. 